to my legislative report. I'm State Representative Justin Simmons of the 131st District. Today I stand with Arlen Schantz here at Evergreen Farm. How are you today, Arlen? Just fine. Good, good. This is quite the uh, operation you have here out here in Lower Milford Township. Well, it uh, keeps me busy and yeah. out of trouble. Yeah. What would you say um, are some of the biggest obstacles you face when running a, a, an operation like this? Well, there, there are quite a few obstacles. Uh, time restraints are one of the big ones. There's always something to do. Seems like you never get done with the work. Uh, there are many other problems. Uh, input supplies are becoming more and more expensive as uh, time goes on. There's, uh, well, since we're in hunting season right now, there's the problem of uh, deer damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That uh, deer roaming around the fields causing a lot of damage to the crops and the uh, Christmas trees, which uh, I do get into. Mm -hmm. Now, with regard to state government, what, what does state government do um, that gets in your way? Is there any obstacles that state government puts in your path that you would like to see changed? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Yeah, how about taxes? Yeah. Uh, one, but taxes more are a problem on the local level or the school district level. But uh, regulations and uh, keeping records, that is a big thing. And uh, the way you do things, you can do this, but you can't do that. It's always something you have to be on your toes in order to m be sure you're meeting the state regs when you go out and spray the fields or apply the fertilizer or even apply manure, things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, what are some of the things that uh, you produce on this farm? Uh, well, the, my main uh, volume crop, I guess you would say, would be hay. As you can see, the, the hay baler and tractor and wagon. So that's what we're doing uh, most of the summer, baling hay when weather permits. This year, of course, was challenging. First of all, it didn't grow because it was too dry. and then you couldn't harvest it because it was too wet. But then uh, Christmas trees, another big thing, especially this time of year, that keeps us busy, uh, mostly weekends, but uh, it keeps us busy all year getting, uh, getting ready for them. People have no idea the, the amount of work that goes into uh, caring for a Christmas tree from baby tree up to uh, market size when somebody cuts it for a Christmas tree. What, what, what is the bigger operation here for you, Christmas trees or, or the hay? The, I guess volume-wise would be the, the hay, okay. but it's getting pretty close. Okay. Uh, and to, with regards to, um, what do you find most rewarding uh, in being a farmer? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, the, what, one of, I would say the, one of the main things is the, the freedom, I guess you would say, of, of uh, planning your workday. Uh, I could say the hard work, but that's not e really a rewarding part. There's always so much work to do that it seems like you never get done. And there's also pressures put on that certain things have to be done certain time, like corn harvest, like Christmas tree harvest. But uh, being able to be out there and uh, doing your own thing and trying to do the best you can and be innovative and trying to get uh, the most production, the most profitability off the land. Great. Well, do you want to go over and look at some of those Christmas trees? Uh, sure. Great. That'd be a great idea. Great. Come on, let's go. Well, now I'm here with Arland in the, uh, what we I guess we would call the Christmas tree department here at the, uh, at the farm. Arland, tell me a little bit about, uh, being now that it's getting near Christmas time, tell me a little bit about uh, your, your uh, tree operation here. Okay, uh, the tree operation, uh, I think I mentioned a little bit before, yeah. is uh, really uh, there's quite a bit involved in growing a Christmas tree. Most people see it as, oh, you plant a tree and then you come out at Christmas time and cut it down and harvested it. But uh, we start out with uh, planting little seedlings. They're about uh, 12 inches tall. Okay. Uh, we do that in springtime and plant them one by one. In my case, I don't have any mechanical machine, wow. and plus it would not work on, on my conditions here on the hillside. Uh -huh. And then uh, we, all through the seven to 10 years that they're growing, you have to keep the weeds down, you have to control the insects. There's certain uh, fungus diseases that sometimes get on the tree that okay. you have to control. It all depends on the season, how the weather goes, and if you get dry weather, the, the season of uh, planting 
that uh, could mean that uh, all the trees or a good portion of the trees you planted that spring didn't make it through the summer and, and you end up replanting them the following year. Now with, with some of your trees, uh, say you want to get a tree about five, six foot, about how many years does it take for a tree to get that big? Five, six foot, uh, you probably get a nice one in, in around seven years. Seven years? It's, it's, it varies. I mean, like people, you know, different trees get grow faster, slower, but you have to control the growth or, by pruning okay. or else uh, you won't get a nice uh, shape tree. Now, um, would you say on any given year here at this, uh, the operation you have here, how many trees would you say you sell? In a given it, it varies so much according to there again the weather yeah. and how many are ready that particular year but we get into uh, 200, 300, 400 trees in that area. Uh, there's a movement today in Pennsylvania with uh, buying local with all the great um, agricultural things in Pennsylvania. I noticed that your farm is a member of the PA Preferred Program. Uh, can you explain to me a little bit about what that program is about? Okay, yes. I, I just recently got into that program. Uh, it, it's about uh, promoting uh, product or agricultural produce produced in Pennsylvania. And since we're ta standing in a Christmas tree field, uh, an excellent example of that would be uh, some time back, they were importing uh, Christmas trees from uh, the Oregon, Washington state area. And those trees, since they never, never felt a frost, did not hold up in our conditions once when uh, they were taken in the house and uh, you know got back in the warm mm -hmm. conditions of a house and the Pennsylvania trees since they are grown locally and they're accustomed to our weather and our conditions hold up so much better than than trees like that. Now um, back to the specifically with the trees with the all the wet weather we had this past summer what was the impact on the uh, trees with that? Uh, that's interesting you ask because, uh, well, first of all, it started out with the dry sure. early, shortly after planting, wouldn't you know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the trees that were planted this spring didn't make it. But then the rains came and the larger trees that got through the dry spell, uh, they're looking great. Good. Good. The, the water, uh, the water, you know, they're saturated now. And in fact, I had a call from a neighbor saying that... Uh, my tree isn't drinking water, and I think the main reason is it's not thirsty because they've been out in the rain so much here yeah. recently yeah. Yeah. that they're just saturated and, and looking good. Well, uh, anything else you think that the viewers should know about the uh, Christmas tree operation here at Evergreen Farm? Well, that uh, we have a, uh, a choose and harvest type operation. People come out and pick out their tree and, and then cut it and take it back. We process it back at the farmstead. Uh, net it, bail it, well net it and bail it and uh, we have a shaker and also a, a stand straight uh, tree driller and uh, the big thing we sell along with the tree is the event, the family coming out and picking out their tree. Great, what does that entail Arlo? Well it entails uh, first running over to the cows and saying hi to them and then the guineas run by and the kids say what are those and then they chase the cats and and then there are a few roosters going by and things like that and it's just a, a neat family outing on the farm. That's wonderful. That's, well Arland, I, I appreciate you uh, allowing us to come to your farm today. Well that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions uh, please contact my office uh, at any time. Thank you.